Hi there, welcome back. As promised in the video of using fusion shapes in the edit page, today I will demonstrate how to group and sort the parameters that are used in the shape generator template. Previously we created this generator template, essential shapes tutorial. Let's add it to the timeline. For simple macros with only a few parameters, it's not much of a concern how the parameters appear in the inspector. But in this case, as you can see here, we have a lot of them and they look pretty intimidating. Go to the Fusion page and open the Essential Generators in the Effects panel. Right click one of the generators or click the three dots option menu, choose Show Folder to open the Template File folder. Since I have associated the setting file extension to Notepad, I can double-click the Shapes Tutorial Settings file and open it in Notepad. This will be our working tool for today. I'm not going to explain all the details in the settings file, the content is mostly self-explanatory. But this group operator plays a big role here, it controls how the macro is displayed in the Fusion node editor, I would like to give it a few more words. Because the tutorial template was saved as a group macro, it is showing as a group in the editor, which allows us to double click and open the group to see individual nodes inside the group. Change this to macro operator, save the change and go back to the Fusion page. Add the tutorial template to the editor, it now appears as a single node. If this is what you prefer, you can choose the Save As command when you create a macro. I personally like the group version because it allows me to make additional changes for individual nodes in the Fusion page instead of being limited by the exported parameters. All right, let's change this back to Group Operator and back to our topic today. The first input section is the list of parameters that were chosen in the macro editor window when we created the macro in the Fusion page. They are simply named as input 1, input 2, and so on. In the DaVinci Resolve Inspector, these parameters are displayed in the exact order as they are saved in the file. We can swap the positions of these parameters to change their display orders. For example, I want to move corner radius, sides, points and depth to the top, underneath the shape type. Select all the lines of input 6, which is the corner radius parameter. Control X to cut them from their current position. Position the edit cursor at the beginning of input 2. Press Control V to paste the copied lines. Press Ctrl S to save the change. Go back to the Fusion page, add macro to the editor. And in the inspector, we see that the corner radius is now showing underneath the shape type. We don't have to change the name in the setting file, they don't affect the displaying orders, we just need to ensure they are unique in the list. Repeat the same step for the other three parameters. As there are many input parameters, I search the word sides to locate the parameters. Since they are together, we can select all the lines, cut and paste them at the same time. Save the change and go to the node editor. Add the updated macro to the editor. Now we see all four parameters are moved up under the shape type. If we forgot to rename the parameters when a macro was created, we can also change their names in the settings file. The corner radius is for the rectangle shape, we can add a name entry in the settings file. And give it the name of rectangle corner radius. Similarly, we rename the other three parameters to polygon sides, star points, and star depth. OK, we have reordered and renamed some of the parameters. Next, we will see how to add new pages to group the parameters in different tabs. 
The last set of the parameters are used to control the soft glow effect, and I want them to be in a separate page. Find the filter parameter in the setting file, which is input 55. Add a new page entry inside the definition. Give it the value of soft glow. Save the change. Now if we add the template to the editor, we see that a new tab, soft glow, is added, and all the parameters after the filter are moved to this new tab. So this page definition tells DaVinci Resolve that all parameters, after and include the one with the page definition, will be displayed in a new tab, until it sees another page definition. For example, I also want to separate the parameters of the duplicate node. Add a new page to the first parameter of the duplicate node, set the page name to duplicate. And another new tab added for the duplicate effect. But the shape color parameters are also moved to this new tab, because they are saved after the duplicate parameters. To move them back to the controls page, add a page entry that is set to controls. Great, they are now back to the first tab, and the duplicate tab is dedicated to the duplicate controls only. Sometimes there are parameters added by mistake, in this case I have the allow combining parameters added, but not necessary. So we just need to find the parameters in the file, and delete them from the list of input parameters. Okay, they are all gone now. Repeat these steps, we can create more pages to group parameters based on their functions. Grid controls go to the grid page. Border style controls and color controls go to the border page. Jitter parameters go to the jitter page. But there is one thing here, I want the jitter tab to appear after duplicate and before the soft glow. Which makes more sense because the jitter effect is the last step of a normal shape workflow. Just like we did earlier for sorting individual parameters, we use the same approach to move a page. Select all parameters inside the page. Control X to cut. Place the edit cursor at the first line of the soft glow page. Control V to paste. OK, the jitter page is moved as expected. You might have noticed that in the jitter tab, there are only two parameters. But in the settings file, there are actually a lot more than just two. Where did they go? If we look closer at the definition of these parameters in the settings file, all of them have this control group definition, except the first one, and they are all set to the same number 9. The ones that appear in the inspector are the last pair of parameters, point Y offset. They are grouped together with a slider and two input boxes. It seems like that minimum and maximum control only accept two parameters for the same group. Let's change the control group values to unique numbers for each pair of these parameters. And, great! All the jitter parameters are now showing up in the jitters tab. OK, we've discussed sorting parameters and moving parameters to new pages. What about grouping parameters inside a page? Like we see in the inspector of many built-in nodes. For example, the text plus node has different group sections inside the text tab, which can expand or collapse. And I want to group these five parameters into a layout group. I couldn't find a very intuitive way to achieve this, but here is what I did. Right click the background node and choose edit controls. Add a new control with the name layout. Set the input control to label control. Check the show arrow option. For the hide next number, enter 5. Because there are 5 parameters we want to group. Set the nest level to 1, since this is the first level group. Click OK to confirm. In the user tab, 
we see a layout label is added after the shape type. But when we try to create a macro, this layout label is not available for selection. So I select the background node, make a copy. Paste the content into another notepad. Select layout control definition in the user controls section. And press control C or right click to make a copy. Go to the setting file notepad window. Find the user controls section of the background node definition. Paste the lines after shape type. Make sure to add a comma after the shape type list. Copy the definition of input 1. Paste the line before input 2, which is the first parameter of the intended layout group. Change the name to shape layout. Set the source to layout, which is the name of the user control. Remove the default setting. Save the change. Back to the Fusion page, add the macro. And here we go, those parameters are now collapsed under the Shape Layout group. To make the group expand by default, go to the Settings file. Go to Background Node Definition. Add a new layout input line, set value to 1. Save the change. That's it. Now if we add the template to the editor. The layout section is expanded by default. All right, that's all for today. I didn't expect to spend so much time trying to show how this was done, but that's just how it works. I didn't want to leave anything out. If you are still with me, thank you for your patience and see you next time.